Hey everyone, this is Lenny here. So WrestleMania is less than a week away and I just wanted to share some quick thoughts and predictions about the event. I have to give WWE credit. They have built this up to feel like the biggest WrestleMania of all time and it really feels that way for me with some of the great matchups and interwoven stories that we're going in. Everything just seems like WWE is firing on all cylinders. So let's just get into those predictions. We have the third ever, technically, brother versus brother match at WrestleMania. We won't count The Undertaker and Kane. And it's between Jimmy and Jay Uso, who are carving out their own little corners on Raw and SmackDown. Jay is truly living up to the main event Jay Uso moniker as he is one of the most over baby faces on the wrong roster, while Jimmy and his crazy eyes has settled into the bloodline acolyte enraged that his brother had left him to fend for himself. With all of the players in the bloodline storyline, it could be easy for these guys to fall into background players. But WWE has done a really good job of building up the physicality and the psychology of this match. At the end, I feel Jey Uso is going to get the nod because I believe WWE has some major plans for him post WrestleMania. I mean, he is not called main event Jey Uso for nothing. We got some lucha lucha goodness as Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee are pitted against Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar. One. I'm glad both Santos and Dragon Lee are getting some WrestleMania shine. And two, I am okay with Dom and Rey meeting again because I do believe their feud is the catalyst to showcase the future of WWE's Lucha wrestlers. At the end of the day, I do feel that the heels pick up the victory so Dom can get a little bit of retribution and vindication from his loss of to Rey Mysterio last year. Also to open the door to a potential heel turn, which I think is coming because I think Carlito is probably going to interfere in the match. Dragon Lee isn't even Latino and he's been accepted into the Latino world order and was given this match instead of Carlito. I think someone is going to take umbrage with that and that is going to give the heel team of Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio the win. Next, we have one of the more intriguing matchups with a six-woman tag match as Damage Control challenges Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi. This is something that has been brewing over the past few weeks as a weekly new wrinkle keeps getting added to the Damage Control storyline, branching out and affecting other members of the SmackDown women's roster as that first Naomi was suffering beatdowns for saving Bailey, then Bianca, who doesn't care about Bailey, who got herself beat up to save her friend Naomi. Things came to a head last Friday on SmackDown when Jade Cargill came out to clean house. And it is Cargill that will be the wild card of this match, as we know everyone else in this match can pretty much go. I believe at the end of the day, this is going to be a showcase for Cargill, her aura, and her freakish strength. Also, I think WWE realizes they have something with Bianca Belair being undefeated at WrestleMania and may want to play with that to build to a future match with Jade. Honestly, I wanted the Kabuki Warriors to defend their titles. I'm of an old school mentality that all titles should be defended at WrestleMania, but honestly, this is a good way to get all six women on the card. And also, it is nice to see WWE getting a women's feud out there that does not revolve around the titles. So yeah, WWE is definitely branching out with their women's storyline. But at the end of the day, I do believe that the baby faces of Jade, Bianca, and Naomi walk out with the victory. Oh man, we have a match that could absolutely blow minds as we have a six-pack ladder match between champs Finn Balor and Damian Priest of the Judgment Day, DIY, Awesome Truth, The New Day, New Catch Republic, and Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Everyone in this match can flat out go, and I am sure they have some insane spots to take years off their careers planned for our entertainment. It's great to see DIY finally get a WrestleMania match. Same with New Catch Republic. 
So one of the things that I found very fascinating when Michael Cole was describing the rules of the ladder match, he made it seem like both belts or both sets of belts would need to be pulled down. And there's something in me that's thinking that the belts are actually going to get re-separated and will be on separate brands. So what I actually am thinking is going to happen. I think the Judgment Day will actually keep the Raw titles, but the SmackDown titles will go to Awesome Truth. And WWE has been building towards R-Truth and Awesome Truth getting a big title victory in a big WrestleMania moment. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Judgment Day take the Raw titles, but Awesome Truth, R-Truth, and Miz taking the SmackDown titles, and they have the title separated in that manner. Now we are starting to get into the big matches and we got Sami Zayn challenging the dominant Gunther for the Intercontinental title. As of this recording, this is the 662nd day of Gunther's historic reign as the longest reigning Intercontinental champ of all time. Sami has been built up as the ultimate underdog, one that even needs training advice from Chad Gable, who is trying to exercise his own demons. Gunther has been built up as one of the most dominating champions of all time, so to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Gunther did pull out a victory. But I think Gunther is being prepped for bigger and better things, and in order for that to happen, he needs to be freed of the Intercontinental title. So I do believe that Sami Zayn is going to take the victory and he's going to be able to be, you know, kind of a plucky fighting champion. But I do believe that this is going to be, you know, the main set of events that is going to set Gunther off and he is going to go on a rampage all spring and summer and it's probably going to lead to him getting the World Heavyweight title at SummerSlam. But yeah, in order for that to happen, Sami Zayn has to win the Intercontinental title, and that is what I predict is going to happen. We got one of the major women's title matches next between Women's World Champ Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch, and this has been brewing pretty much since Rhea beat Charlotte at last year's WrestleMania, when fans started whispering either Becky or Bianca as potential challengers for the year after. Once Becky showed up at the WrestleMania press event, it became clear who Rhea's contender was going to be. But what isn't clear is the winner. Becky Lynch is retapping into her The Man persona that willed her into the WrestleMania 35 main event that I was there for, which makes her extremely dangerous. But Rhea Ripley is just on another level right now. And I think it's a level that Becky Lynch truly understands because when Becky was on fire between 2018 and 2019 leading up into WrestleMania 35, she was one of the biggest wrestlers on the planet. And that ground swell of support, that organic swell, ground swell of support that was there for her was just palpable. And I feel that same support is there for Rhea Ripley and she is just in the stratosphere. And I just don't see any way or any path for victory for Becky Lynch. Rhea Ripley is legitimately the future of WWE and their women's division. They are building a lot of that around her. So I see Rhea Ripley walking away with the big, big victory on night one. And here we go. On night one, we got The Rock and Roman Reigns of the Bloodline up against Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins. If Cody and Seth wins, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns on night two will be one-on-one -on -one for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. But if they lose, it is bloodline rules on night two where anything goes. Honestly, this is the easiest match to call. Because if Cody and Seth win on night one, there is no drama. Rock and Roman have to win to put doubts in fans' minds, in Cody's mind, 
and even in Seth's mind for his title match against Drew McIntyre. I still expect this match to be an absolute banger, full of drama, one that no one at Lincoln feels going to be silent for, but yeah, it's going to be pretty obvious. The Rock and Roman Reigns are going to win the main event tag match on night number one. Then we have the matches for night number two. Kicking things off, we have the Pride, Bobby Lashley, and the Street Profits up against the final testament of Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain. This is a feud that has been ongoing for weeks, with the Final Testament getting all in the Pride's business, stopping Lashley from participating in a singles match at WrestleMania, and then preventing the Street Profits to advance to the tag title ladder match. So now we get a six-man brawl, and this was the stipulation needed for this match. We needed something wild and fun, and I could see a lot of crazy spots being done all around the arena. I hope Montez Ford doesn't do anything to kill himself, but yeah, I do feel like the Pride is going to win this match to definitively end the feud between the Pride and the Final Testament, so I see Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits coming out on top. Next, we have the match between L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles, and this is a match I honestly didn't expect, but I'm glad we got it. I honestly was thinking that Knight was going to be slotted against Logan Paul for the United States title, giving his meteoric rise and popularity in 2023, but A.J. Styles always brings the good at WrestleMania, and while doing my annual rewatch of all WrestleManias leading up to WrestleMania 40, I realized how successful AJ is at WrestleMania, so a win over Styles would be a big deal. The build hasn't really exactly set the world on fire, but I think this is a match basically sold on who are competing against each other, which for LA Knight, that kind of vote of confidence is big. I also think this will be a major test for Knight to really hang in the ring with one of the best wrestlers of the 21st century. I think this will be a back and forth match, but at the end of the day, LA Knight is going to give AJ Styles some blunt force trauma to take the victory and gear him up for bigger and better things in 2024. Next up is the triple threat for the United States title between champ Logan Paul, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. This has been a pretty entertaining feud, made by Logan Paul's obnoxiousness as a heel and the chemistry between Orton and Owens as a pairing. Obviously, with this match being a triple threat, that chumminess will end, but I am expecting an entertaining sprint that once more will showcase how insanely athletic Logan Paul is. I hate to say it, but Paul has Kurt Angle potential as someone who just took to wrestling like a fish to water, and he's just getting started. I see Paul walking out with the United States title because we still need obnoxious heel champions, and I do still think that the end game is between LA Knight and Logan Paul, perhaps for the United States title at SummerSlam. But yeah, I do see Logan Paul walking out of WrestleMania with the win and him retaining his United States title. We have the main damage control program next as we got women's champ Io Sky against 2024 Women's Royal Rumble winner Bailey, And I am excited for this match because both of these ladies can bring the goodness and I have a feeling they will have a chip on their shoulder to deliver a big time match. Io Sky going to WrestleMania as champion? Sign me up. Now, I believe that the rest of Damage Control is going to be subdued by Naomi, Bianca Belair, and Jay Cargill to really make sure that this is a true one on one match between Bailey and Io Sky. But in the end, I think Bailey will take the win to begin the cracks and the ending of Damage Control as a faction. But yeah, I see Bailey taking the win and the women's title from Io Sky. Then on night two, we get our two major men's title matches. First, Seth freaking Rollins against Drew McIntyre. And this has been such a great build and I've enjoyed Drew on the mic, but now we have this new wrinkle of CM Punk being the guest commentator for the match 
bringing a level of unpredictability that the match really needed. Their three-way promo on last week's Raw was one of the best ever and really sold the fans on the importance of the match. In my opinion, logic would dictate that Drew would be able to take advantage of a broken Seth Rollins from the night before and win the match and the title, and I do think that's where we are heading. But wait, there's more. There's no way CM Punk is going to show up at WrestleMania and not have any impact on this match. So I do believe Drew McIntyre is going to win this match. He is probably going to do something to piss Punk off. Punk is going to clobber McIntyre with his arm brace, which is going to allow Damian Priest to come out cash in his money in the bank briefcase and he will become the new world heavyweight title and CM Punk will get his revenge on both Drew and Seth freaking Rollins to make sure neither of them walk out of WrestleMania as champions. So yes, in this match, I see Drew McIntyre getting the title, but at the end of the night, it will be Damian Priest that will be world heavyweight champion. And finally, we have the WrestleMania 40 main event, the WrestleMania 39 rematch that has undisputed WWE Universal Champ Roman Reigns against the 2023 and 2024 Royal Rumble winner, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. After Cody's devastating loss at last year's WrestleMania, we have seen him overcome obstacle after obstacle and fans are chomping at the bit to see him finally finish the story. But can he? I predict night two will be bloodline rules and man, I expect absolute madness. I have been nicknaming this event WrestleMania Endgame and that is exactly what I expect. This is going to be an Attitude Era overbooked insane bad fest that will probably have half of WWE's locker room cleared out to somehow participate and I also feel it will somehow be a weird celebration of WWE in the past 40 WrestleManias. This is going to be one of the wildest main events in WrestleMania history. Will John Cena appear? Will Stone Cold Steve Austin appear? Will Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn who have heat with the bloodline in the past, will they make an appearance? So many possibilities. But at the end of the day, finally, finally, Cody Rhodes will finish his story and the last image we will see at WrestleMania 40 will be Cody Rhodes holding the WWE Universal title high above his head as new Universal Champion. So those are my predictions for WrestleMania 40. And again, I believe this is going to be one of the wildest and biggest events WWE has ever produced. You can see with my t-shirt who I'm cheering for, who I want to see finish the story. But at the end of the day, this looks like to be one of the best cards WWE has ever produced. And I am just super duper excited. And this is just my week for wrestling. So much going on. And as I mentioned, I'm going to provide a live coverage and live discussion post WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday. And I will be providing a special WrestleMania sized Wrestler of the Week on the Monday after WrestleMania. So look out for all of those. What did you think of my predictions for WrestleMania 40? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.